1971 Ford Ranger from Mobius Models. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to our home on the range where we get to drive our 1971 Ford Ranger by Mobius Models. This kit again is loaned to us from our good friend James and looking at the cover of this it actually looks like the old Ford advertisement from 1971 which is really cool. Anyway if you love these great videos don't forget to like subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click that notification bell down yonder so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. Now, in case you're wondering about model kits and that I'm Monster Hobbies and you see this stuff and you want to buy it, we may not have all these kits in stock because some of them are out of my own collection. This one's loaned from my friend James, this kind of thing. But for the model kits that we do have for sale, check them out on www.monster-hobbies.ca and Subscribe to our newsletter, which is also on that website, so that you can get some great discounts on these model kits by checking out our flyers when I get to send them around. Anyway, without further ado, let's go down to the Ford showroom where we get to take the lid off this great model kit and see what's in the box. Now we go all the way back to the Ford showroom for 1971 as we check out our Ford Ranger, another kit loaned to us by our good friend James. However, it's a real bummer that this corner got busted up. It's almost like the box fell off the back of a real Ford Ranger. Got hit on the corner here. But don't worry, because inside it's sound as a pound. So anyway, this is a scale level 3 kit. 125th scale for ages 15 and up. So the real serious modeler, not the beginner guy. I can't see why a... 10 year old couldn't build this. However, anyway, there's our uh, nice photo of our undercarriage here, and then the detailed 390 V8 engine, chrome on the front, soft PVC tires. You know what? I think there's one of these running around High River, a real one. And then again, there's our box art, which again is much like the actual Ford sales brochure of the time. Got a little out of focus there for some reason. Okay, I think I'm having trouble with my lens. All right, so we got accurate body styling, chrome details, and then here it says part of the fifth generation of the Ford F-Series, the Ranger XLT, represented the top of the line in consumer styling and performance in a pickup truck. So I'll write some of this stuff in our description down below. You get a really cool model kit. So we'll just pull the lid on here. Right away, we're greeted with Mobius's amazing full color decal sheet, or sorry, instruction sheet. And I wish the other manufacturers would copy this because this is amazing. I know it costs a little more, but it is well worth it, especially when you can see the paint colors with the name of the paints on there. So that's really top notch. Again, most excellent. Our mysterious decal sheet, which I'll just put to the side for now. Everything is nicely packed separately in bags. Skin makes for a very nice model. Chrome all bagged up. Glass in bags so it doesn't rub together and scratch. Then we have our tires separate so they don't sit on plastic and burn through over the decades, which is terrible when you get an old vintage kit and you find out it's tire sat on your glass and burned a hole in it. Anyway, so there's our gray plastic components. Lots in the bags. Sorry, it's not gray. It's sort of like a tan color. <laughs> in case you're trying to adjust the color on this. Sorry. Pardon me. Pardon. Anyway, again, very nice. Now I have reviewed some of these trucks in the past, so I don't think there's too much structurally different on the plastic components. But once I clear all this out of the way, we will take a look at our instructions and then check out these parts. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood.
Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River Flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River Flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now! Suddenly it's 1971 again as we get to review these amazing instructions and I get to give you the lowdown on just how amazing this kit is. So here's all our important read this first stuff. Painting your kits, the keys to the parts, and our decal application guide. So yeah, very nice. Just open this up. And now like I said in the past, I've done a a few, I think this is my third review of this type of truck from Mobius, and it gets better every time I do it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the skinny on the front end. This kit really reminds me of the AMT 1953, yeah, 53 Ford pickup truck. It's laid out exactly the same, and that's what I love about this. And I would like to build a few of these from Mobius actually. So there we've got our uh, front cross member here. We've got our motor mounts separate and our steering box and there's our left and right twin I-beams going in as well as we've got our radius rod down here. All this is being glued onto a nice frame and then if we just slide this up here you can see that we've got our left radius arm and our tie rod slipping across here. Uh, then our sway bar and our linkages down here and our rear axle and differential going across there for the next steps. It says note how tie rod feeds through holes in radius arms. Now going into the rest of this I get some really good vibes here as I glue on my rear leaf springs and then we have this nice long exhaust pipe going on. And it says, note that exhaust pipe weaves through length of frame. Rear of exhaust pipe fits beneath the rear cross member and front section fits over middle support bar. There's our differential that we did in the first step, getting glued in under the springs and under the exhaust. And then our rear shocks going in. And then much like that AMT 53 Ford, we have our tire, our spare wheel, and the spare wheel center going or carrier, pardon me, going up into the back. Step two is showing the wheels going into the tires. And these are just two pieces, so there are no wheel backs. However, we do get these nice brake backer plates that glue in on our pins. And then the wheels will go on there as well. And as we slide into our last panel here, you can see the wheel covers popping onto the steel wheels. Now there is one groovy component about this kit that I don't think was in the last two trucks that I reviewed. Here we have a Ford V8 sitting underneath here with the two engine block halves going together the oil pan underneath. And we've got an automatic transmission for easy cruising going on the back. And then we've got our cylinder heads going onto that nice engine block. And as we slide it on down, do the slide. We have the fan going into the fan belts and pulleys, the alternator gluing behind, a water pump, and our front engine cover all gluing to our automatic block. And then we've got our valve covers and our intake manifold, as well as our right and left hand side exhaust manifolds. Groovy! Our engine gets further completed with the distributor, our coil, our PVC valve, which is pretty new for this era, and an oil breather cap, as well as our carburetor and a breather cap for our valve covers. And then on this side, we see our oil filter going on, our air cleaner, heater hose, and starter motor. And down here, we have our horn, left and right, gluing onto our radiator. Ooh, and if we slide in, that pretty much tore it over there. <laughs> no, I didn't tear anything. 
There's our engine going in on our frame, the radiator dropping in and our upper and lower rad hoses, as well as our drive shaft connecting us to our rear axle. Step four is really the bomb as we glue our glass in to our cab. Note that the clear windows should be inserted through the inside of the cab, Not, so don't glue them from the outside. We have sun visors gluing up, on, up top there, a rear view mirror as well. Very nicely done, very well executed. We've got our brake master cylinder right and left hand side instead of like front and back. Our firewall going into place, there's our radiator support, battery, windshield washer, bottle, and a car jack all sitting up underneath, as well as the, um, slipping this down here, there's our hood with the chrome trim bar and left and right badges gluing on, our grill for our 71, as well as the headlight lenses and the chrome spears, windshield wipers molded separately, mirror, door handles, and gas cap. All of this stuff just superb. And here's our interior going together. Now it's all molded separately, much like those great kits from AMT. You get a side panels right and left, our floorboards, our rear wall, our cross member, and our seat. And then as we go down into this panel, we get our dashboard, which probably has a radio so we can listen to Jerry Reed singing Amos Moses. And there's our steering column and steering wheel, as well as this little pedal locator for our accelerator, brake, and emergency brake pedal. Of course, it's an automatic, right? And then our cab will pop into our interior. And then for our truck bed, we have the outers and inners gluing together and our bed walls. And then here we've got all those walls glue onto the floor. And there's a front wall as well as our inner tailgate and outer tailgate. And then finally, we slap on the Ranger chrome side trims, the taillight housings and our red taillights all popping back into our truck bed. Step 7 shows our final assembly of our front bumper going on, our hood, the cab, the bed, and the rear bumper all locking into place on the chassis. And now here's something really cool for me and you and a dog named Boo. There's our color and decal applications. So you can see the air cleaner on here, air cleaner decal, as well as all the cool instrument panels and your radio, of course. And if using decal too, be sure to paint the tailgate panel stainless steel before adhering the silver Ford lettering. Cool stuff. Very, very groovy. And if we flip this over to the back here, we can also see all our paint colors and codes, as well as the special Ford two-tone combinations. So without zooming in, we have a first color on our body, and then the second color for our roof. Here we have the second color going on uh, the top of the car and the first color down below for... Okay, so this is a standard two-tone. The roof is a different color. The deluxe two-tone is the roof all the way down to the trim is a different color. And then the combination two-tone is you have the body, the lower body color, the upper body color, and then the or sorry, the first body color, second body color, and first body color on the roof again. So again, very nice. And here we also have our interior panel trims and how they all link up. So again, very nice. And that, my dear friends, will conclude our look at the Ford Ranger instruction sheet. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below.
And here we have the cab for a 1971 Ford Ranger. And it's interesting if you hear. There, this is actually textured on the body. And I do believe this is so that when you paint it, the paint will actually stick into this texture for a nice smooth finish. There's a little bit of uh, mold marks under here, which again, your number 16 hobby blade will be able to get in and scrape her down. The front of the truck looks just like it should. Very nicely done. Nice grill work in here. And then we have our uh, inner fender wells. Everything looks to be right. The panel in the back, very nicely done. Again, much like the other kits that I've reviewed of this same subject, but very, very well done on the behalf of Mobius. Here's all the parts in our first bag. And as you could tell from pulling them out of the box, there are a lot of bags we're going to be seeing. So there's our floor pan, our Ford hood with the big Ford letters on it, the inner door panels, the front bench seat, or the only bench seat, I guess. <laughs> there's our wall for inside the cab, as well as our inner rear uh, bed boxes here. And there's the panels for the back and our box here the floor of our box. So if I just clear these out of the way for right now. Now oh, I can look at this piece first. So there you can see the nice detail in there, just like the real thing. Whoop, a couple of mold marks in the back here. You could uh, hit that with some sandpaper because you've got a nice clean shot. These ones down here, again, that number 16 hobby blade. There's our floor. You can see the nice detail on here. If we turn it upside down, we get the cross bracing. There are sink marks in here, unfortunately, plus some raised mold marks. These ones are okay because they're underneath the seat, but again, you will know what you want to do there. You scrape them down or not. Some detail carpet in here. Very nicely done again. Here's our front buckets or bench seat you can see the nice upholstery pattern in there just like the real one 71 and then our door panels with the window winders and that's the nice part about molding these flat again mold marks in the back but what can you do there now here we're gonna have our inner wheel arches for the truck bed again nicely done nice that they made them separate like the real deal and then you would weld them together on the real truck. There's our back of the truck as well as the floor of our bed. Turning it over, you can see all the bracing that's underneath as well as all the mold marks and sink marks underneath. Which again, you could fill these with some putty. Put some putty under your number 16 a hobby blade and get it in there nice. So again, there's our components for this model which all go together really well. I did this wrong, didn't I? Oh well, but there they are, nice and fully crisp. Now here's our next bag full of parts, and it had three parts trees in it with a lot of stuff, as you can see in our video here. <laughs> anyway, there's our uh, suspension and frame components that are all part of the kit, as well as more of our interior here. So let's just move these briefly out of the way and then get in there and take a look at how they look under the camera. We'll start with this one here. And as you can see, you got that nice differential in there plus the differential cover. It's a huge truck style differential, very indestructible. There's our rear wheel here that would be going up underneath on our frame. There's our uh, front members. Here we've got our pedals. There's the master cylinder, a bunch of the engine bits, the jack. He's got the jack. The battery, the visors, and our big springs. Very nicely done, turning it over. A couple of sink marks, but these are up underneath. You don't really see them. So a little bit of flash here on the rear springs. However, generally quite a lot of nice detail. Moving along, we have the rear wheels and the front wheels, as well as our radiator and bracket supports. 
Then our final piece from that bag is, of course, our dashboard with the radio, and then our tailgates in here, the firewall underneath the hood there, and steering column and a bunch of other goodies. So just take a look at that nice detail on there. Of course, on both sides. Oh, there's some obvious mark on the back here. Nicely hidden. Bunch of mold marks, easily to get rid of. However, overall, whoops, my pointer stick. Another great set of components for our truck. And here's our final colored plastic components before we get into our chrome. There, of course, is the nice big perimeter frame, our automatic transmission, the intake manifold, the pulley, and the fan, as well as our drive shaft, our rear tailgate, our engine block pieces and our cylinder heads, front water pump, there's the coil, I do believe, uh, oil filter, steering wheel, the air cleaner. Oh, no, that's the coil. This is something else. Probably the starter. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's all the rest of our engine components and our exhaust pipe. And let's bring this up into our camera. Starting with... Actually, there's two pieces here, so look at the nice detail on there. Very well done. Very nicely executed. Air cleaner and steering wheel. There's our tailgate with the engine block. Nice Ford lettering on there. Very nicely done. And we've got our frame here. Quite a huge piece of plastic. And there's our automatic transmission looking just like how it should. Turning this over, you can see our intake manifold there. And then all that nice detail. It's even a little tiny clip right there. So again, very nice work from our friends at Mobius. Great frame. All right, let me clear all this out of the way and we'll take a look at our chrome goodies. And here we have my favorite parts of all the model cars. And that, of course, is our chrome. And here's something kind of interesting. You get some Krager style mag wheels in here, which is kind of cool. But there's our stock hubcaps as well. And uh, again, our bumpers and valve covers and whatnot. Door handles, rear view mirrors, and our distinctive 71 Ford grill down here, as well as the Ranger side spears for both the box and the truck, the cab. So let's just move these out of the way and we'll look at them bit by bit. Maybe not those smaller pieces, but anyway, here's our Ford grill. And as you can see, it, the back is out of the grill, so you can actually see right through it, just like the real thing. So I do believe you want to paint behind your firewall black, or not your firewall, but your rad support. So when you look in, all you can see is the black and the nice chrome grill sticking out. Should be good. There's those wheels. And again, the nice detail on those mag wheels. Sort of an optional deal. And even the hubcaps here are uh, hollow through the back. They have the holes molded in place. So just like the real truck, it's the beauty of our side spears in there. Tapered and to the right shape. There's our rear bumper, front and rear bumpers, the taillight bezels, the side mirrors, more of the little script for your hood, the chrome across the top of the hood, our valve covers, and the windshield wipers. All of these pieces, of course, get top marks. And then, of course, on the little trees, we have our door handles, a rear view mirror, and a gas cap. So again, very nicely done by Mobius. Just like a real 71 Ford Ranger truck for when you need to go camping and get out on the range and haul all kinds of great things. Here we have the clear plastic components. I'm just going to leave the red tail lights in the bag here because it's a little bit, uh, you know, as a courtesy 
for James, of course. <laughs> but there's our glass here, and as you can see, it is sunken in a bit around the edges. So that's always good for when you need to click it into the body. It'll actually bring the glass forward into the right location, just like on the real truck. And if I bring this up to our camera lens, you can see we've got our headlights there with that waffle pattern in them. And you want that, of course, to be horizontal and vertical and not off at a 45 degree angle. So make sure you watch out how you're gluing it together. A couple little mold marks on the top of the glass here, which, of course, should be carefully sanded. Try not to hit the real glass, just so that it all fits in shape better. And there's our front windshield again. All of this, again, is in a plastic bag and nicely protected against scratches. Next up we have our tires, and you actually get a fifth tire in here for the spare underneath. And what's interesting about these tires is they have no manufacturer's name on them. There's a nice tread pattern on here. Don't know how well you can see that. But uh, overall, they are pretty plain Jane. But one thing that's nice about them is they're really squishy, much like the uh, Japanese style tires. Maybe not quite as squishy, but still very nicely done. And they'll look excellent under your Ford. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet. It's not quite as big as the one that was in the 69 and 70 Ford truck kits. However, it is pretty cool still. You get the nice wood grain back panel with the Ford letters in it. Or if you don't want that, you have a choice of two different Ford letters. Then we've got our Ranger script here and our side marker lights, or actually side script here. And then we've got our air cleaner decals, as well as the instrument panel, an auto light, and a small Ford oval. And that's a skinny on our 1971 Ford Ranger by Mobius Models. And if you've built this model kit back in the past, we want to see your pictures over on our Monster Hobbies Facebook page. And how did you like the build? Did you find it quite easy to go together? Did you like it? What colors did you paint it? Let us know all in the comments down below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great model kit review and tune in next week for another great unboxing video. And thanks again to James for letting us borrow his model kit so we could explore what's in the box. Now, if you love these great videos and want to support us down here at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell down yonder so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And if you really love model cars and want to buy some, uh, shop with us, please, at uh, www.monster-hobbies.ca and sign up for our newsletter so that every time there is a great deal on model kits, you're the first one to know it. And until next time, everybody, have fun out there with your ranger on the range. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address www.monster-hobbies.ca Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.